like to help other kids so we can make a difference. So that people in other countries have exactly all that we, they need. This is our story of sponsoring a child with compassion. So let's start off with compassion. Compassion is a thing that helps other kids develop and get what they need and stuff. And the Bible is pretty clear that generosity is not about how much you have, it's about what you do with what you have. I remember our pastor at our church sharing about how if you don't have to walk to work every day and you have a car, like you are like one of the wealthiest people in the world. That perspective made me realize how much I really have. And I realized that it was really important that we start being generous. You know, we wanted to sponsor a child, and so we looked with Evie and picked out a, a child whose birthday was, was kind of close to hers, so they were around the same age, and, and it was a girl also, and her name is Marabella, and she's from the Philippines. Um, Marabella is six. She likes singing. She also likes drawing, I think. Understanding the concept of poverty isn't personal until you put a face to it. And compassion put a face to poverty and a child's name to poverty. And um, it became this huge concept that's just out there somewhere and gave us an actual person to impact. So they, so Mirabella's year was like they had hurricanes. Hurricanes over there, typhoons over there. And maybe I want to help them because when I think about things that I didn't really like or times where it was hard. I think about poverty and how hard poverty would be. And I, and I thought, I wonder how these people feel. I was in the kitchen and Evie woke up and came in the kitchen and she, she literally walked out of her bedroom with this idea pretty much fully formed to the degree that she shared with me, Dad, I had this idea that um, I, could, I could draw pictures, me and my friends could draw pictures and then people could buy the pictures for a dollar and then we could send that money to people who are poor. I hoped that it would make a difference that I'd make enough art to raise $500. You know, she came out of her bedroom thinking about someone else, which is huge for a child to do, and then thinking, what do I have? What, what ability, what assets do I have that I can use to make a difference? So, you know, we thought that getting involved with Compassion, sponsoring a child, we were going to be making a difference. And what we found is that through, through that, Compassion has given us um, a story and this purpose. Well, God wants us to do our gifts because He wants to make the world a better place and a better place for other people. Um, we don't consider ourselves as having very much, but um, because we had this uh, priority, both of, of the type of family we wanted to be, the type of people we wanted to be as followers of Jesus, as parents. Um, Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's gonna be. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have to move your treasure around to put your heart in the right place. As people are thinking about whether to sponsor a child, I want to tell everybody, like, do it. Like, it's gonna change your life. Like, you need to do it. So the blue is the sad kid because he doesn't have enough of what he needs. They need food, water, and medical service, and shelter. And the yellow is the happy kid because he has enough of what he needs, and he's been sponsored. We can all show kids the love of Jesus. Sponsor a child and make a difference.
Tuesdays. Oh, there I am. <laughs> 6.30 on Tuesdays. I believe that this week is a lesson. Um, and the lessons are based on the uh, Beatitudes. And so you're not going to want to miss that. And Celebrate Recovery can help with any hurt, habit, or hang-up that keeps you from having a full relationship with God, yourself, and others. And the last announcement that I have is we want to know, how can we pray for you? We believe strongly in the power of prayer. We want you to go to churchofthemidcoast.com forward slash prayer. And if you're like me, get confused between forward slash and backslash. Forward slash is the one that's leading toward prayer. So churchofthemidcoast.com forward slash prayer. And then let's start this service off with some worship. And that means um, and you don't have to carry a tune to be able to participate in this. No buckets. No caring required. You just lift your voice up to God. So let's get on our feet. That means you two at home. Get out of the recliner and get on your feet. Amen. Good morning.
serve a faithful God. The thing I love about God is that when we are faithful in the little things, He is faithful in the big things. And one of the ways that we can be faithful as believers is by giving to the mission of the local church. And here at Church of the Midcoast, we have seen God show up in some amazing ways because we have stayed faithful in our giving and with our financial gifts. So I encourage you today, it's not about the amount. Whatever you can give, I know God will bless you for it and the church will be blessed as well. So today you can go to our website and you can give at www.churchofthemidcoast.com forward slash give. But right now, I am excited to hear a spirit-filled, life-giving message from one of our pastors as they get ready to share God's word. So I encourage you to take out a notepad, take out a pen, get ready to take some notes after the short video as they get ready to share God's word. Church, enjoy the experience. It's great to see you, and I love that one little part that says, you are welcome here, and you are, and you're welcome online out there, although I think we'd rather have you here. What do you think, folks? Huh? It's, about time. it's about time this body started gathering together in prayer. This is going to be our second uh, sort of in the series on prayer today, and um, we're going to do something a little different. Notice I have some Beautiful ladies up here with me that uh, they made, that's part of my notes, they, they put that in there, I, I had to say it. But I'm going to start off, and we've got, um, there's three PowerPoints that are going to pop up here, and they're all from last week's devotional, and they are very, very powerful, and I want us to, I want us to start at sort of beginning to ingest this stuff. You know, sometimes we hear it. Ever find that you hear things and it kind of pops off the top of your head and it's gone? Or you read it and you wonder, well, I think I remember that, but I don't. And I think it's kind of nice to review some of this. I know every one of you were involved in that devotional last week, right? Right? I can't, I can't see that far out there. You know, the, the glare. I know everybody's nodding their head. But look at this, first of all. Prayer is not a presentation. Prayer is our access to God, the Creator. The power of prayer is the most powerful tool that a Christian has. Amen. And you know, the irony of that is that it's available to all of us. All we have to do is just literally open our mouth. Now, we're going to do something different here today that I don't think we've done this in years and years here. We're going to kind of use an interview format, and we're going to talk about a very difficult and personal situation that's happened right here in this body, and we're going to see how prayer has affected it. And it's powerful, and it's something that you're going to learn a lot more about this as we unfold. But take a look at this, take a look at this second um, video here, or clip, or whatever you want to call it. The power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it. You know, sometimes you ever feel like, well, I'm just little old me, and I'm kind of weak and insignificant, and how can I? It's got nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with the one who hears it. Amen. And we've got two ladies over here. I was going to say they're just two ordinary ladies, but that would get me in a lot of trouble <laughs> back, back home. <clears throat> they're two very special ladies, but they're just local people who live in this community. Heather here has been a long-time attendee and a member at this church, and, and Ruth and I have, um, we've been, actually, we've been married for over 50 years, 52 years, and um, that's why I really have to watch what I say up here. Um, 
and we're, we're part of the pastoral team. We keep trying to retire. Last time I, pre- I pre- Kevin drags us out every once in a while. I'm not sure exactly why, but last time, I, Kevin, I'm done. That's it. I'm hanging up my cleats, and I'm finished. And he, you know, he's a persuasive guy, that pastor. And maybe he's praying. Maybe he's praying that, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> praying that, I hope Sam doesn't blow this whole thing, but I, I, I think it'll unfold. But, and you know, it, is, it actually is an honor. I'm kind of wishing we really could retire, but it is an honor. You guys hear some very powerful messages. You know, we just got through traveling for about six weeks down south, and we didn't do it as much as usual, but usually we attend different churches. And, you know, kind of, you know, I come back here and I have to say that the, the quality of the production and the quality of the messages, very, very powerful. I thought what Jeff did last week on prayer, it actually motivated me to sort of re-examine some of my prayer life. I mean, it really was that powerful. And when a message can begin to do that, you know, that's what it's supposed to do. Let's take a look at this last, this last slide here. You are never, and this is something we really need to remember, you're never a bother to God. He wants to be involved in your family life, your work life, your big and small decisions. God doesn't only care about your future, He cares about your today. And we're going to look at kind of, I guess I'd call it the today of of Heather's situation. You know, and I wrestle with this sometimes. I I don't want to bother God. Anybody ever feel that way? Or I don't want to, you know, go to Him with something insignificant. And I'll tell you, it's tough. I mean, I really, I really have to wrestle with that. When I'm in, when the pressure's on, Boy, I'll pray, but on a lot of little things, I think maybe a lot of guys are like maybe kind of a little bit like that. We sort of, well, I can do it myself. I got it. I got it. What's the old main saying? I'm okay. I'm okay. Anything wrong? I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, your leg's broken. Your family's falling apart. Your finances are done for. I'm okay. I'm okay. I got it, God. I got this. So, we're going to move through. We've got some, some interesting, we've got this, uh, this clip that's coming up. And I want to give you a little bit of a background on this. This is, this is um, <clears throat> going to give you some insight into some of Heather Dugan's challenges over the last five or six years. Now, Heather has three daughters and a son. One of her daughters is wonderful, Olivia, who's a lot of times up here in the, in the, on the worship team. And I think she's running this slides back there right now. Another daughter is Kaylee, who is in college and just just doing wonderful. Then she has an older daughter named Heather. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you're Heather. An older, you know, I did this when we were practicing. An older daughter named Amber. And Amber has really had some difficulty with addiction. And boy, if anybody's been around somebody who's addicted or has struggled with it themselves, you know how powerful that can be. It re, you, you almost you become a different person. And this addiction that Amber has suffered with and really still does has just developed some incredibly difficult challenges in Amber's life, Heather's life, and the family in general. And there's been an amazing amount of prayer that's taken place. And this is really what we're going to talk about today. So with that background, let's play this clip, Libby. Let's let's play this. When my adult daughter became pregnant in 2013, I became aware of drug and alcohol abuse and physically abusive behavior. I began praying constantly for this little baby girl she was carrying, asking God to protect her from the environment she was developing in. I would imagine God's arms wrapped around her, keeping her safe. In June of 2014, Isabel was born, premature and drug addicted. She went through withdrawals as a newborn, but I thank God she was not born with fetal alcohol syndrome. Many prayer warriors stood beside me praying for this little baby. She was in dire need of help as a baby. She could not do any of the baby developmental milestones that she should have. I kept praying and God sent us a wonderful team of nurses and therapists all working to help Isabel catch up developmentally. In addition to the physical challenges, DHHS had begun the process of reuniting Isabel with her mother. This was a terrifying time. 
but every time I had to hand over this precious girl to her mother, I forced myself to remember that God loves Isabel even more than I do, and his plan is always better than mine. I began to visualize handing her over to Jesus instead of her mother. After years of this, within just one month of gaining full custody of Isabel, her mom was in a terrible car accident. After a night of drinking and partying, her car was totaled. But praise God, Isabel was not in the car, and her mom walked away without a scratch. She lost custody of Isabel for good, and I was free to begin the adoption process. And then on February 14th, 2018, Valentine's Day, the day we celebrate love, Isabel was adopted. God is love. God's plan was greater than anything I could have asked for or imagined. In February of 2017, between the time of the car accident and the adoption, a second baby girl, Malaya, was born, healthy and happy. I would visit and babysit Malaya, seeing drug paraphernalia at her apartment, people coming and going, and rumors of drug runs using the baby carrier with Malaya to hide drugs. I prayed for Malaya, for God's protection, along with her paternal grandmother. In January of 2018, my daughter Amber was arrested for aggravated drug trafficking, and Malaya was placed with her paternal grandmother. After a few months in jail, Malaya began the years of back and forth to reunite her and her mother. Her grandmother and I, along with many others, continued to pray for her well-being. Liam was born in February of 2019, and I thank God I could be there to welcome him. Within just one week of gaining full custody of Malaya, there was a domestic violence incident and Malaya and Liam were both taken into state custody. Malaya's parents both lost their paternal rights and her grandmother began the adoption process. Liam is currently in the reunification process with his mother. I stand confidently praying for God's loving protection, knowing that he always protects his children. I've learned not to pray for what I want, but to pray that I walk in God's will. God is in charge of the outcome. I only need to stay obedient. I pray all three of these children will live wonderful, productive lives to go on and glorify God. Any of your parents or grandparents out there? Think of what was just covered. Drug addiction. Uh, jail time, auto accidents, children being born with uh, drug addiction. Think, think of that. And yet prayer and more prayer and support and more prayer has brought about some incredible results. Right now Heather is raising Isabel and Liam is with you also. And Malaya is with her paternal grandparents. I mean, it's a miracle, an absolute miracle of prayer that that has unfolded the way it has. And there's still challenges and things aren't perfect by any means. But just think of how powerful. You know, some of you out there are struggling with anything, something similar. You think about how, how powerful that prayer has been to unfold something as beautiful as this. Amen? Isn't that... It's just amazing when you think. I hope it really touches your heart and gets you thinking about the power of prayer. And I wanted to ask Heather a few questions. Um, you know, especially when all this was happening, Heather, with, with Isabel in the beginning, and it was kind of all new to you. Um, were you aware that other people were praying for you? Well, I don't know if this is on. Right? <coughs> Should I just push the button? There. I was definitely aware that there were people praying for me and with me. Ruth prayed many times with me, for me. There were many, many women in this church that were praying for us. So I was well aware of that, yeah. How did it make you feel knowing that you had this, in the midst of all this incredible chaos, really, how did it make you feel that your new people were praying for you? There's a definite comfort um, and encouragement, knowing that you're not alone, that there, there are people surrounding you. Uh, it's kind of a funny analogy, but I think about um, penguins facing the Arctic cold and winds. Uh, they huddle together, 
and the penguins that are on the outside of the circle kind of like take on the brunt of the wind so that the ones on the inner circle are safer and warmer and then they rotate to take turns um, and it's kind of like that when we pray for each other someone is be in the middle being prayed for and then when they are encouraged and helped and they're ready they can pray for somebody else who needs the same thing so there's that hope involved in knowing that you're being prayed for yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Of the church coming together and wrapping around each other. That's part of why I think it's nice to be in here because you really know what's going on. People share a little bit bit more. That That's that's really something. Um, you know, now Isabel was born addicted. Um, tell us a little bit more about uh, answers to prayer concerning her specifically. So when Isabel was a newborn, um, you could see a definite, uh, like a veil over her face. Like the things weren't connecting um, behind her eyes. She couldn't like follow, track anything with her eyes. Um, she just was not developed. And then somewhere between two and three years old, she just became this um, happy, joyful toddler running around. And it was like something just changed in her. Um, and she had life in her. So that was an absolute answer to prayer. Uh, but more recently, I can tell you um, of an incident that was a definite, immediate answer to prayer. Last summer, um, we had a court date, and unexpectedly, um, the judge decided he was going to give Liam back to his mother. And it was a shock, and it was not expected, and it was upsetting to us, mm -hmm. to me and to my other girls. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, we went over to Kim and Kevin's house. And we were there. We were praying with Kim. Um, and within just a few minutes of praying, the phone rang. And it was Liam's guardian at Lightham calling to tell me that there was an incident she found where uh, Amber had violated the one condition on getting Liam back and that he was coming back that day. <laughs> wow, praise God. That's and that just happened, right? That was just last summer, and it was just within a few minutes of praying for God's protection and for God's will, and then the phone rang. Wow. Where were you when that happened? At Kim and Kevin's house, okay. at the Gray House, yep. Right. Praying with Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's amazing, isn't it? I was almost going to say it's incredible, but it really isn't incredible. You can believe it as you start really believing in, in prayer. And I know you and Ruth have a long history of praying together. Do you think that prayer has connected you two in a, in a special way? Absolutely, yes. I think that um, getting to know Ruth and uh, being on the receiving end of her prayers um, has been a, a tremendous blessing to me and to my entire family. Um, and while I knew she was praying for me, she didn't realize until recently that she was also talking to me in my dreams, that um, I'd have dreams about her where we were walking along the water, um, usually on a rocky coast, and she would be talking to me about God's beauty and how he's powerful and he can do so many wonderful things. And um, so she wasn't even aware of this, but yeah. You know, dreams, God uses dreams a lot. I'm just reading um, about Joseph uh, in, in the dreams that he was able to interpret for Pharaoh when he was a prisoner in Egypt and how God uses those dreams. But I think they kind of get, they get motivated through that uh, network of prayer, that weaving together of a couple of minds. You know, God is, God is very supernatural. He's not just confined to, to a few dimensions of operation. And he, he can work beautifully. That, that's a great... And you never knew anything about that, no. right? Not at all. <laughs> I know you've got, Ruth, you've got quite a prayer routine. I mean, I, I see her every morning doing this. You want to... Tell us about your prayer routine. How did... Well, um, I love the Uversion Bible app where we have a devotional. Um, and it just, I don't know, I just look forward to that every morning, going, getting my phone, click on, opening it up. And it, is, it just blesses me. And it's amazing. It seems like every time 
it's something maybe you've been praying about. There's a verse that pops up that's just right for that exact time. So I love that. I can't encourage you enough to get that app. And you can, I think there's a way you can just, you can talk to Kevin or you can click on the link. Uh, and Kevin sends out an invitation every week. And it's wonderful to do it together. Um, so everybody in the church can be involved and read that same app. And, um, and then there's a place where you can make a response at the end. What are your thoughts about this? And that just brings us together, especially at these times, you know, just to know what you're thinking about this, how this hit you. And I just love that. And that starts me off. And then I'm right now I'm doing the Bible in one year that gives you, you know, some Old Testament. And then it gives you some verses from the New Testament and a psalm or a proverb. And that's just kind of a nice routine. And then I go into praise and worship. And I just do that on my phone, Amazon Music, click on. Up, you can get this beautiful stream of worship music. And that just takes me from my head to my heart um, to worship God, puts me in that humble place. And then prayer just evolves out of that as I'm worshiping, just to pray in that close time to God. And, and, and then I usually journal. Often God will speak something to my heart at that time, and I'll write it down. And, um, you know, it's great years later sometimes to look back on some of those things. Mm. So how did you, how did you, when did you get started, and how did you, how did you start with that kind of a routine? How did that? Um, I think, well, just after I got saved, after I invited um, Jesus into my heart, um, things changed. I had no interest in the Bible up to there, none whatsoever. And all of a sudden, I had a hunger for the things of God. And also, we found a church where prayer was very important, and they taught on it a lot, like this church here. And, um, and I just began developing a routine. And uh, I can remember uh, years ago, I don't know how many years it's been now, but um, I can remember. Don't admit you'll have to. <laughs> people will start guessing your age, you know. Scooting my kids up to the bus stop, getting them on the bus, zipping home, running upstairs, sitting by my window, opening up my Bible, and having that wonderful prayer time. So that was. Let's see. That kid is forty-four years old. So anyway, it's been. <laughs> it's it's probably been forty years, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. You know, not that I don't, sometimes you get busy and something happens, but you always come back to it. And it's just, it's just so wonderful to have that connection. Mm -hmm. And then as far as praying for Heather, tell, tell us a little bit about that. How did that? Well, it just always, her story, does it not touch your heart? Oh, my gosh. What, you know, and I just felt it hit my heart, and I wanted to pray, and I... Um, actually, you know, it's amazing. We've got to realize how much God is involved in our everyday life because I didn't know exactly what we were going to be talking about this morning. And wouldn't you know, I dug out a devotional from 2014, just happened to open it up, and what do you think is there? I'll, I'll read it to you. And that's why it's so good to keep a little journal, because you can go back and you can see the prayers that God answers. Sometimes we pray for things, then God answers it, and we forget that we prayed for it, that it is him that is answering it. Anyway, this is September 29th, 2014. And I just made this note. Our part is to pray in faith. After church, we prayed for Heather Dugan and baby Isabel, as Heather was going to go on Monday to be on the stand at 1 o'clock to testify against her daughter's ability to take care of Isabel. Can you imagine having to do that? Uh. Her heart was breaking over it. Heather had been given custody of Isabel since birth, and Amber and the father were fighting it. God answered in the most miraculous way. The lawyers settled the case by mutual agreement before anyone took the stand. Wow. Heather continues to have custody, and Amber has increased her visiting rights. This all worked toward keeping peace and restoring the whole family. 
Thank you, Lord, for this remarkable answer, better than we could think or imagine. Probably some of you have heard about custody suits and challenges within families. They hardly ever resolve themselves yeah. like that. I mean, usually it's just bitter, bitter, bitter fighting, but it's prayer. It's prayer and operation. You know, Heather, let's look at things today. Now, you have, you've got Isabel, and you have Liam. It must be very, very challenging. Raising two grandchildren. Um, has prayer, have you found that prayer has helped you currently, like right now? Like getting them ready for yes, church? Of course, yes, absolutely. I, the biggest, of course, the biggest difference is um, I'm 30 years older than I was when I had my first two children. So I do not have the energy or the strength that I had when I was a lot younger to chase a little toddler and a <laughs> little six-year-old around the house and try to get them dressed and brush their teeth and comb their hair and uh, everything that you go through every morning. So I don't have that kind of strength or that kind of energy, but God does. And so turning to God when I need strength or to sustain me, and you know, some days you just think, oh, I cannot possibly do all this. I cannot possibly uh, go another day where I have to carry all this, but going to God um, you have that, that ability to carry on another day, and you know that your strength is not yours, but it comes from God. Amen. That's, boy, there's a source. What was that first slide? The power. It's the, it's the most powerful tool that a Christian has. I hope, I hope some of this is sinking in. Is it getting across to anybody? Yes. You, can, you, can, you can say yes. It, it is. And, you know, Heather, in kind of in view of all this prayer, and it's been a long time. 2014 was a long time ago. Uh, you know, would you have any advice for, <clears throat> say there's somebody out here who really wants to pray for somebody specifically, would you have any advice for them? Well, like you just said, prayer is the most powerful tool that we have. Um, and I think it's also the kindest thing that we can do for another person is to pray for that person, to go to God on their behalf. Um, so, of course, if someone's on your heart, um, if someone's on your mind, I would absolutely say to pray for that person is the best thing you can do, 100%. Yes. What if somebody doesn't feel adequate? Well, none of us are adequate. Amen. We all just, it's, it's not about how adequate we are. It's about who we're praying to, and he can do anything. So as long as you have that mindset, pray for anyone you can, absolutely. It's powerful stuff, isn't it? And it's happening right here. This isn't something we're reading about. It isn't something that you saw on a video somewhere. This is happening right here in our midst. These kids are running around, and you're seeing the answers to prayer right here. Yes. And I know, Ruth, you have, with your extensive prayer uh, involvement, I, I know that you pray for a lot of others as well. I know. Tell us about your, your African connection. That's fascinating. All right. Well, years ago, um, here we were talking a lot about Compassion International, and we decided to sponsor two little boys in Rwanda. And so I've been praying for them, I don't know, at least, at least 10 years, probably 12 years, and just getting notes back from them. And, and maybe I'll just read these to you. And by the way, we had no idea that next week we're actually going to be talking about Compassion International. Isn't it interesting how God puts things on your heart at just the right time and leads us? So... Um, these little boys are now 16. They're in a special program where they're um, getting job training. And it's just been wonderful. I, I just love the letters I get from them. I'll read you two of them. Dear Sam and Ruth, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Thank you for caring about me. I don't know if I'll get through this without crying. <laughs> oh, dear. I pray that God protects you. 
I love you and your family. Kindly pray for me, too, that I can study well. I've had a sickness that makes it hard for me to study. My pra family prays for me daily. I have been sick for two weeks without studying. I love you, Ruth and Sam. Thank you. You know, just to have a connection across with kids in Africa, how awesome is that? Here's another one. This is from Tumashimi Vidasti. Dear Sam and Ruth, I greet you so much in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God who continues to protect you. I thank you for wishing me a Merry Christmas. I love you and I pray for you that God protects you in the pandemic. I thank God because no one is suffering here from the pandemic. We always pray for you and we wish, we wish you all the best. Boy, you know those little prayers, imagine uh, it's just such a wonderful connection knowing that they're praying for me, you know. Um, so it's been wonderful. And I think you'll learn more about Compassion International next week. Mm, that's great. Well, I want to thank you, too, for being willing to share. It's difficult stuff. And, and yet, a lot of times when we share what's closest to us, it touches somebody else. I know people... People here in the audience, people out online. Are, are, I know people are struggling with similar things, and I've got to really hand it to both of you, who, especially Heather, for being willing to, to share some of this so publicly. And, and uh, it is powerful, isn't it? I want to wrap up with three scriptures. The first one is here in Chronicles, and it lays out some guidelines for prayer. Now, we can just start praying. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to be all that technical. But, you know, we can take another step. Some of us are mature Christians here. We can take another step. Look what it says here. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and this is the tough one, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is actually God speaking. Solomon was dedicating the temple, and God spoke these words. I mean, this is, if my people who are called by my name. And there's some things in there. You're willing to humble yourself? That's tough. I know it's tough for me. Are you willing to seek God's face, to really look? And then are you willing to turn from some of your wicked ways? You know, that may be a connection. It, it does say it here. It's kind of hard to, to sort of swallow some of that. You mean, wait a minute, God is going to maybe hold back some of his answers if we're just being wicked and weird and unusual and sinful? No, I don't know. I mean, it's, kinda, it's above my pay grade. But it's something to think about, isn't it? You know, if we really want answers... Humble, seek, turn, and pray. It's kind of like drop, stop, drop, and roll, you know, when you're on fire. But humble, seek, turn, and pray. Let's look at another one. Now this is Paul writing to the Roman church. And in a way, this sort of lets us off the hook of the Old Testament. Because it said... In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. You know, God knows we're weak. We may not be able to turn from those wicked ways right away. Um, we do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself, that's part of the Trinity of God, intercedes for us through wordless groans. I've had a few times where I've actually groaned in prayer because I just didn't know what to say, or the situation was so dire that I just didn't know. What, anybody ever have that happen to them? It, uh, you know, it's okay to raise your hand because it lets other people know that we're kind of all in the same boat. But it says right here, even if we're weak, even if we're pitiful, even if we're just thinking we're worthless and we've really, really blown it, you can come crawling into God's presence and just groan. And the Spirit of God that knows us can interpret that. Isn't that 
I mean, it's amazing to me to think along those lines. And then let's look at this last one. This is one of my favorite verses in the whole, or multiple verses in the whole Bible. James, James was a pretty heavy-duty guy. He kind of lays it on the line. And you know, as we read this, I want you to think, it's really a pattern for what a praying church should look like. Now, I'm going to go through the whole thing, and then we'll kind of break it down just a little bit. But if anyone among you is in trouble, let them pray. Anybody in trouble once in a while? Pray. If anybody is happy, let them sing songs of praise. We did that earlier, and we're going to do it again in a few minutes. If anyone among you is sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil. That's a pattern of things. I know we do do it here to a degree. Let's keep doing it. Maybe let's ratchet it up. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins. And this is where it it really gets into corporate involvement. This is why I say it. it's great to be here. It's very hard to confess your sins to anyone when you're not physically here. And it takes guts, just like it took guts for Heather to share. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Boy, that connects confession, being honest with each other, letting down the, the, these masks you don't have to really, I mean, that's a figurative mask, <laughs> but it's, it's, it, isn't it something to think about? Because we do. We all have these protections that we sort of put around us. We say, well, you know, I may expose this, but I'm not going to expose everything. Well, this is saying, you know, we get honest, we start confessing, we start praying for each other, that there's a lot of benefits in it. This is a great, it's a great outline. For, and, I, and I think that the Church of the Mid-Coast is, is doing a lot of... I mean, this is not an anomaly here that these two... And it's not just Ruth and Heather and Ruth that's been praying for Heather. There's been a whole team. I think we can go farther. I think we can do more. I think we can corporately be tighter. And I kind of want to wrap up this, you know. Has anybody really been touched by this? And you're thinking about the power of prayer? I mean, it it... it it is amazing. You know, and if any of you here have, have something that's, that, that, prayer, that, that you need prayer for, you know, feel free. Maybe, maybe raise your hand and just, we don't, you don't have to come forward. You don't have to be confessing to anybody. God knows. I'm going to lead in a prayer, but, but I, I just like to see, I know people here are struggling. I know there's things that are going on. I know out there, folks, if you're willing, I know there's a, um, there's a virtual prayer card that exists, and it's on the church website, and you can, you can actually hold your phone up and do the QR code, which I have no idea how to use, but there is a lot of access to prayer. And Pastor Kevin and the pastoral team here really wants to know what's going on. He really wants to kind of see some of the same results in your lives that we've seen in Heather's and the kids. Amen? Amen. So let's maybe let's all just stand. And I, I'm going to stand and lead in a, in a corporate prayer. I mean, uh, the, the rest of the, the pastoral team, Jeannie and Jeff and Kevin are here, that if you wanted somebody to come and lay hands on you, you feel free to, to, to ask them or raise your hand. But Lord, let's just, Lord, we are coming to you. You, you say, you say in your words, over and over and over again that we can come to you in prayer we can humbly seek you and we're doing that Lord we know that none of us are worthy to stand in your presence but because of the blood of Jesus we have been washed we have been cleansed and you will hear our prayer that's why we pray in the name of Jesus you will hear 
our prayer. Lord, we are praying for financial healing here. We're praying for physical healing in this congregation and out there online. Lord, we're, we're praying for family healing, that families can be pulled back together. There's so much tension today, pulling families apart. Lord, we pray for, for physical anxiety, uh, sickness that people suffer from. Lord, we pray for unity in this body. of, of and, and Lord, you know, without us mentioning, you know the other things that, that, that we need. We need your help. We need your guidance. We need your power in our lives. And we raise this prayer to you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, if any of you need prayer afterwards, seek out Pastor Kevin, seek out Jeff and Jeannie, Ruth and I. I mean, we'd be glad to spend some, some personal time with you. But I think now let's, let's wrap up with the angels. And, and here, here they come. On wings of eagles come the angels. And everyone's already standing and ready to worship, so we are ready to go. I love it. Your love.